Welcome back to Fudge Muppet, my name is Scott, and due to an incredibly popular request, I am excited to be bringing you the third of our role-playing build series, The Bounty Hunter. There is no place to hide, whether strolling the streets of Neon, or hunkered down in a base on some remote world, you cannot escape him. He is a professional of the highest caliber with every tool at his disposal. He has the fastest ship in the galaxy, high-tech plated armor, hundreds of explosives and gadgets for every situation. He also has a specked out overclocked burst fire particle beam pistol with annihilator rounds and of course a high-tech boost pack allowing him to track his mark to any place they may go. Undoubtedly bounty hunters are one of the coolest trope tier classes in sci-fi and there is a good reason for that. They ooze personality and presence. Whether it is Boba Fett, Cad Bane, Bosk, Spike Spiegel, Jango Fett, and honestly there's hundreds of others across plenty of universes. So we wanted to bring this experience to Starfield. Prepare to become the Bounty Hunter. These are dedicated role-playing builds full of statistical greatness but complete with backstories and character personalities, but if this isn't something that interests you, then you can use the timestamps to navigate to the more statistical parts of the build. Also, I am keeping this spoiler-free like all of our builds will be, no main story talk or faction quest outcomes spoken about, we want you to experience these for yourself. The role-playing section will give you a more in-depth insight of the character personality and so you will be able to infer the Choices he would make from there, but with all that said, let's dive into character creation. Conceptually, well, I mean, look at him. His biggest inspirations are 100% Boba Fett, Jango Fett, and Din Djarin. I pull from Mandalorian influences a lot, from armor selection to ship design. I feel as if I have pulled off the closest feel to a Mandalorian-type bounty hunter that you can get in Starfield, and hopefully you feel so too. While there aren't any abstract codes for the bounty hunter to be following in regards to wearing a helmet, I do choose to keep it on most of the time because it creates this menacing, cold presence ideal for the bounty hunter. Now, you can name your character whatever you like, of course, but I named mine Django Fett, but with a silent D, with a little nod to Django Unchained. I also made him quite bulky and muscled so he can fill out that armor, giving the feel that he could snap your spine with ease. But let's dive into the background. I wonder if you can guess. I saw comments joking in the pirate build because I used the bounty hunter background and that the bounty hunter background is going to be the new Atronarch stone. And there is good reason for that. If you're familiar with our Skyrim builds, we often picked the Atronarch Stone as it is such a good bonus and it became a little bit of a channel meme. The Bounty Hunter background is also a great bonus for lots of characters. It gives you three points in the tech tree, meaning with only a single point investment in tech at level two, we could have access to the second tier of tech skills at level three. The starting skills for the background are boost pack training, piloting, and targeting control systems, the perfect starting combination for the Bounty Hunter build. Now, I promise you, unlike the Atronarch Stone of Skyrim, the Bounty Hunter background will not be reoccurring for every build. We really do prioritize role-playing here, and so we plan to use the full variety of backgrounds for our various character builds. I promise it is just a coincidence that the pirate also used this background, but yes, a Bounty Hunter should ideally have the Bounty Hunter background. Go figure. As for traits, there is a ton of creativity to be had. I'd recommend against something like Wanted, because then bounty hunters will try and track you down, and you're a character who hunts down the Wanted, not Wanted yourself. At least that's how I think about it. The following decisions have been informed by the backstory involving him as a young gun leaving the humble life to live on the edge, plus there is some gameplay reasoning for these as well. So I chose United Colonies Native, Kid Stuff, and Dream Home. An interesting selection you might think, for a bounty hunter at least, but this will all make much more sense in the backstory. The United Colonies native is a flavor pick, but as for Dream Home and Kid Stuff, both of these will cost you credits. And what is the bounty hunter's main motivation? Making a stack of credits. Bounty hunting is his job, a lucrative one and something he excels at. Plus, having family to care about I think adds to the extra motivation and willingness to engage in morally dubious behavior for the sake of supporting them. It's the gotta look out for your own first mentality. 
The backstory and role-playing sections of the video will expand more about this character in terms of personality and motivations, but now let's get into the gameplay elements of the character. Time for the nitty gritty, let's talk skills and how to prioritize them. Due to the nature of Starfield's leveling system, it is hard to give an exact order of leveling skills because each requires certain challenges to be completed first. So for instance, I might say get pistol certification rank 3 at level 8, but you've not completed the required challenges by then, and we don't want to be sitting on skill points unallocated. So I thought it would be best to break down all the skills the character needs in the long run, in total, and then I will provide some benchmark examples of the build at levels 15, 30, and 50, roughly encapsulating an early, mid-game, and late-game feel. This will all be in the leveling section of this video, letting you know what to prioritize. The Bounty Hunter pulls heavily from the tech and science skill groups, foregoing the social and physical skill groups entirely, but the combat skills for Bounty Hunter will be necessary given that a lot of his work consists of killing. In Tier 1, we have Pistol Certification 4, which is one of the most bang-for-buck weapon types in terms of skill investment, offering the largest increase in damage for skill points invested. Rank 1, 2, and 3 increase our damage by 10, 25, and 50% respectively, and the 4th rank gives us a very nice bonus. Pistol kills grant 25% more critical hit chance for 5 seconds, and the amount of times due to our other skills that we can just burst into a room with our jetpack and just chain heaps of kills quickly, this is amazing and it really helps a lot. From tier 2 we grab all 4 ranks of demolitions. I love the gadgety vibe for a bounty hunter with all kinds of grenades and mines as well as a negotiator for airstrikes. He has a full toolkit and this skill helps us optimize for it. Rank 1 makes explosives have a 25% large radius and a grenade trajectory arc is now shown when throwing. Rank 2 explosives do 25% more damage. Rank 3 reduces the damage taken by explosives by 25% and rank 4 doubles all the previous bonuses totaling in a 50% larger explosive radius, 50% more damage with explosives and you take 50% less damage from explosives. Ultimately we want to feel like Django Fett with wrist rockets and the rest of his toolbox. The final of the combat skills we get into is particle beams and ultimately this will be for our Varun Star Shard pistol that we use in the later game. I thought the visual appearance of this weapon and the fact that it feels more high-tech and deadly, more like a disintegration weapon in vibe, that it would be a great fit. The first three ranks of the Particle Beam skill increases damage with these weapons by 10, 20, and 30% respectively, and to cap it all off with rank 4, Particle Beam weapons have a plus 5% crit chance, which is real nice, and that stacks with rank 4 of pistol certification. Moving on to the science skills, there is a solid investment in here and the main reason we want to be in here is for the crafting skills. As a bounty hunter we want to be able to spec out whatever gear we are using to the best of our abilities as well as add that personal touch. The bounty hunter is very particular about his tools but there is also some other utility in here. We get started with the astrodynamic skill. From a role playing perspective being able to jump across the galaxy to find your target is on point and while Sarah Morgan comes with this skill we make other choices of companions, ones that feel less Girl Scout in demeanor. She isn't a good fit for this line of work. Rank 1 increases the range of jump drives by 15%, Rank 2 reduces the fuel cost of jump drives by 15%, Rank 3 increases the jump range by 30%, and reduces fuel cost by 30%, and the final Rank 4 reduces the fuel cost by 50%. The utility here is twofold. First, investment in T1 of science is necessary so we can get to the crafting skills of T2. Too. But also, one thing to consider with all of these ship-related skills is that they actually influence our ship design. If you've seen our recent video, The Fastest Ship in the Galaxy, well, that was the main ship for the Bounty Hunter, and as I wanted it to have a compact design, this skill allows you to squeeze more out of a smaller grav drive and a smaller fuel tank, allowing you to be more efficient with your ship design. Astrodynamics is quite easy to level as well as you play, as the challenges simply involve grav jumping, but I felt getting one one rank of medicine helps us get to tier 2 much sooner, plus it has a little nice bonus of 10% more effectiveness for our med packs and such, but also this skill point contributes to the total so we can access tier 4 later. At tier 4 we have the spacesuit design skill, of which we get 3 ranks. The first 3 ranks successively allow you to craft improved, superior and cutting edge spacesuit mods, so we can tailor our armor with all kinds of beneficial modifications, but personally I forego rank 
4, which makes it so construction of mods for spacesuit, helmet, and pack mods occasionally don't cost resources. Personally, I don't really vibe these kinds of skills because its benefit is only really felt on chance and you aren't chopping and changing mods all the time, because once you're set up, you're good to go and you'll no longer be yielding this benefit. And look, resources aren't that expensive to buy either. In my opinion, you'll be wasting a skill point to yield the benefit of smallest convenience that isn't even guaranteed to occur. I thought Medicine Rank 1 instead actually confers some tangible, consistent benefits, so I picked that instead. But if you insist, grab the fourth rank of spacesuit design. Just remember, you don't need it to craft the mods we use. Next is Weapon Engineering, and at ranks 1 through 4 it allows us to craft improved, superior, cutting edge, and master level weapon mods. This is what's going to allow us to spec out all of our weaponry, including our Mag Sniper, Negotiator, and Varun Star Shard. Now with all those skills acquired first, we can then get to the very first rank of Special Projects, which is what allows us to unlock the experimental research so we can truly max out our weapon engineering capabilities and get all the mods we want. So that is science sorted, we're specced out for crafting, let's dive into the tech skills. The tech skill group is big for piloting and we have heavy investment in here. Our background gives us a very nice head start with a rank in boost pack training, piloting and targeting control systems, but let's keep it left to right and start with ballistic weapon systems. I chose ballistics for the bounty hunter, it just felt right and the rail guns are such a vibe, plus its skill bonuses are on theme. Rank 1 increases ballistic weapon damage by 10% and they cost 20% less to use in targeting mode. Rank 2 increases damage by 20% and the recharge is 15% faster. Rank 3 increases the damage by 30% and they recharge 30% faster. And by the fourth rank, ballistic ship weapons do 50% more damage to individual systems. The fourth rank in particular, I think adds a little extra vibe, ruining a target's grav drive and engine so that they're dead in the water and their fate is sealed. Next up is boost pack training, which at rank one allows us to use them. We start with this at rank two, it makes our boost packs use less fuel, rank 3 makes it regenerate quicker, and rank 4 doubles the previous bonuses. Vital for our bounty hunter. We want to feel like Django Fett just darting all over the place, taking him down from the sky. Piloting is next and we start with rank 1 which allows us to use thrusters, rank 2 gives us better maneuverability, and rank 3 and 4 give us the ability to pilot class B and class C ships, which is vitally important for this character. Any character invested in ships should get their hands on this skill. Our other starting skill is targeting control systems which unlocks the ship targeting functionality, allowing us to specifically target parts of enemy ships. Take out their engines, take out their weapon systems as they turn to face you, and imagine their faces as they float in the void at the mercy of your shredding railguns. Rank 2 reduces the time to lock on by 15%, and target locked ships fire at you 25% slower. Rank 3 reduces lock time by 30%, and you have a 10% increased chance of critically hitting a target locked ship. And rank 4 reduces the lock on time by 60%, which is massive, plus you deal an extra 20% system damage in targeting mode, which stacks real nice with the fourth rank of ballistic systems. The fast lock-on is really great for our speedy ship playstyle. Speaking of which, from tier 2 we get the engine system skill, all four ranks. The first rank increases our top speed by 10%, rank 2 makes our boosts last longer and have a shorter cooldown, rank 3 increases our top speed by 20%, and rank 4 gives us another benefit. While boosting, all enemies disengage the player and can only reacquire them as a target after the player stops boosting. This build for me is peak piloting and our speedy compact ship benefits from this greatly, taking our top speed from 180 to 215 and of course boosting more only enhances this. In tier 3 we're going to want to get all 4 ranks of starship design and essential for any ship builder. This adds successive ranks, unlocks new parts available for our ship and most vitally it allows us to unlock our specially speedy engines. The final cherry on top for the bounty hunter in tier 4 of the tech skills is boost pack assault training. This is one of the most transformative skills in the game for us. Rank 1 makes it so that when we boost pack, enemies will take damage and have a chance to catch on fire. Rank 2 gives this same function a chance to knock down enemies, but Rank 3 allows us to aim while boost packing, which then enters us into this hovering mode which can be maintained until fuel is empty, and then Rank 4 slows time by 70% when you enter this hovering mode. It 
is incredible. This is the skill to get to feel the most like Django or Boba Fett. It is also super powerful, allowing us to essentially have slow-mo when we want it, surging into a room and just clearing it of enemies in moments like a professional. It's an amazing skill. Also, you can just jump and aim to get into this mode. I designed this build skill set around the core playstyle of bounty hunting and being able to handle any target whether they are flying a ship in space or hiding out in a cave somewhere, plus I wanted to capture the feel of Django Fett so all the boost pack investment is necessary and he has plenty of cool equipment available. There aren't many caveats on this one, I suppose if you aren't a fan of ballistic weapons for your ship you could always swap it out for another skill catered to your preference. I think missiles thematically would be cool as well, that would be my second choice. Also I know again this list is technically for a level 51 instead of 50. I just love adding in the sneaky extras if I feel like it. For leveling further than this, which if you're enjoying this build, then I'm sure you will, I'd highly recommend, especially if you build the bigger versions of the Bounty Hunter ship, more info on that later, then Anutronic Fusion in T4 of the Science skill will be very helpful, offering us at rank four, five extra units of power to distribute, and in tier three of combat skills, things like targeting could be very on vibe. But with all that said, let's talk leveling with the skill set that I've prescribed already. Right out of the gate at level one, we will have, due to our bounty hunter background, the skills piloting, boost pack training, and targeting control systems, which is a super helpful boost because with only one single point investment into the tech tree, we will have access to tier two. Personally, I find the ship related tech skills take longer to level without just repeating the pilot exam, so I would begin prioritizing them. Level two, I'd pick ballistic weapon systems rank one, and at level three, I'd get rank one of engine systems. Following this, I'd likely go for pistol certification rank one to get started on combat, then astrodynamics rank one to get started on the science group, and then I'd probably dip back into tech to start getting more ranks, as well as get our hands on the first rank of starship design. Also, heavy investment in tech will get us to boost pack assault training sooner, which really is a cool skill to have as soon as possible. We have lots of choices, but I'll present to you a benchmark example for the bounty hunter build at level 15, so you know where to head. I would as a level 15 bounty hunter have pistol certification rank 2, astrodynamics rank 2, ballistic weapon systems rank 2, boost pack training rank 3, piloting rank 2, targeting control systems rank 2, engine systems rank 2, starship design rank 1, and boost assault training rank 1. Moving beyond level 15, I really want to use this period to round out our combat and really get started on our crafting. At 16 and 17, another rank in pistol certification followed by another rank in astrodynamics, and then at 18 a quick point in medicine will get us straight to tier 2 of the science skills. Level 19 and 20 I'd recommend getting spacesuit design and weapon engineering rank 1. It'd be very helpful to unlock class B ships as well so we can upgrade our ship more, so following I'd take piloting rank 3 and starship design rank 2. We should also be able to get boost pack assault training rank 2 as well. We do have lots of options to pick from in terms of skills, but I'd definitely focus on boost pack skills to really fill out the bounty hunter feel. Looking at the level 30 benchmark of the bounty hunter build, we should have Pistol Certification Rank 4, Demolitions Rank 1, Astrodynamics Rank 3, Medicine Rank 1, Spacesuit Design Rank 2, Weapon Engineering Rank 2, Ballistic Weapon Systems Rank 3, Boost Pack Training Rank 4, Piloting Rank 3, Targeting Control Systems Rank 3, Engine Systems Rank 3, Starship Design Rank 2, and Boost Assault Training Rank 3. We should be feeling pretty damn powerful in the sky, and the boost pack assault training rank 3 will have us hovering in the sky firing away. I'd probably get boost assault rank 4 ASAP for the 70% slow-mo while hovering, which is just a game changer. At level 32, I'd probably go for piloting rank 4, make sure we have access to C-class ships, then probably starship design rank 3, then targeting control systems rank 3, but at about level 34, we want to start pumping into our science and combat skills to bring them up to par. Say by level 40, having added to demolition, spacesuit design, weapon engineering, and finishing off astrodynamics. We should be able to get our hands on a Varun star shard by now, and as I will discuss in the gear section, we won't really be using the particle stuff until we can get this in the later game, so the early investment is not necessary. You could, if you wanted, decide to invest earlier and get the Nova Light pistol, but honestly, I find the ballistic selection for pistols much better, especially early on, plus the ammo is cheaper. And also, Nova Light pistols just feel 
feel very science to me, less punchy bounty hunter and energy. Anyways, at 41, get Particle Beams rank 1 and begin prioritizing that as the challenges are complete. The final level 51 benchmark for the bounty hunter should look like this. Pistol Certification rank 4, Demolitions rank 4, Particle Beams rank 4, Astrodynamics rank 4, Medicine rank 1, Spacesuit Design rank 3, Weapon Engineering rank 4, Special Projects rank 1, Ballistic Weapon Systems rank 4, Boost Pack Training rank 4, Piloting rank 4, Targeting Control Systems rank 4, Engine Systems rank 4, Starship Design rank 4, and Boost Assault Training rank 4. But with all that statistical heaviness said and done, let's get into the backstory followed by the role playing for this character. The bounty hunter always wanted more. More for his family, more for himself. He lived cramped in the well of New Atlantis, in a multi-family home amongst grandparents, aunts, and uncles. His is a tale of ambition. He had no siblings, but his younger cousin Miles was practically so. They were inseparable, two peas in a pod, as his mother always said. They learned together, hustled together, fought together. They were partners for life. Both couldn't help but look out to the skylines of the Master District and want for more. They tried everything, working extra shifts, doing odd jobs, trying their hands at trades and businesses. But one day, Django and Miles got talking to a Tracker's Alliance agent, and the rest was history. When they found out how much a bounty hunter could get paid, their paths were set. They would work as a team, tackle the world together, and finally get out of this hole. Their first bounty went more like a kidnapping, some loser who tried to skip court, a wife beater. The duo began racking up credits fast, a team in perfect sync, but this work rests on a slippery slope. First it was deadbeats, then it was wanted criminals, then the rationalizations came in. Private clients pay more, similar work, double the pay. Who cares who they are? It's a tough world, family's more important than them. Gotta look out for us first, we got mouths to feed. Years in, and the Fett brothers were a bounty hunting duo working for the highest bidder. Syndicates, corps, governments when it paid well. The Fett brothers had a better ring to the name than Fett cousins, and together they gained a reputation as a no bullshit, no mistakes outfit. They had a fancy ship, a fat stack of credits, and a kill count higher than most soldiers. Bringing bounties in alive was risky, and they've got mouths to feed. Their family wasn't doing it tough anymore. They got them out of the well. Django set up his parents in a new pad in Atlantis. They set up his room, but he was hardly there to use it. It became more or less a monument to his innocence of long ago. Things were good, their bank accounts were stacked, but it was never enough. Why quit now? Miles even wanted to retire. We have more than enough, time to kick back on a beach in Poroma, he said. But for Django, it wouldn't do. Come on, one more big score, Miles. Why settle for a holiday when we can have the resort? Miles didn't know how to say no. They were a team, as thick as the thieves they've killed. The big score never came. 10k, 15k, 30k. Nah, that's not a big score. Miles, I'm talking six figures a kill. We're gonna buy ourselves a big house on a beautiful planet for the whole family. They finally got a job that fit the bill. 200k for the head of some ex Teo corp guy. Ryogen was paying premium. Wanted dead. The target was hiding out on Sparta 4. Miles thought this was too dangerous and too good to be true. How's a suit all of a sudden some kind of survivalist, he said. Miles, people will go to crazy lengths to survive. Come on, this is it. This is the score. Like always, Miles caved. They tracked their mark for days, worked out that he was using a cave system as a hideout, or so they believed. It was a trap. This wasn't some suit that they were tracking, but as they found out, he was an ex-Ryogen operative, one with skills. The cave entrance at the cliffside was rigged with explosives, and they realized too late. Miles quickly jumped to push Django away, sending him tumbling off the cliff. He managed to activate his boost pack to break his fall, but Miles was incinerated in saving him. An unimaginable clarity hit him like a comet. Regret seized every muscle, and tears and cries were all that came. It was over. The tragedy split the family. Django tried to give them every credit he had, but no amount of money would bring their son back. He quit bounty hunting then. His parents tried to get him to stay with them in New Atlantis, but he couldn't face his aunt and uncle, nor did they want to be near him. He vanished off-world, getting some dead-end job with Argos extractors, living in penance. His parents sent communications trying to get him to come home. The bank called often about his mortgage for the dream home on Nessoy that he and Miles had bought. Their last bounty was going to pay for the thing, 
Now estranged from family, stuck with a fat mortgage and chipping away at space rocks, you will take the reins of the Bounty Hunter and begin your playthrough. As you pick up the Bounty Hunter's story, you are at his lowest point. He lost his cousin because of his own ambition, and this guilt weighs heavily on him. But the universe is a strange place, and as chance would happen, he will find himself out of a mining job and back on New Atlantis with this constellation group. The Bounty Hunter is going to fall back into his former habits. Perhaps it starts with a little debt collecting that he picks up while talking to the banker about his mortgage. He's also going to feel the pressure to keep his parents comfy in their home, but at the core of his person, all these things are convenient excuses to get him back in the game and to pursue his ambitions to the max. It won't be long before the bounty hunter is hitting the gas pedal and taking on bounties left, right and center. Django Fett is back in business. All the guilt he feels about Miles' death is going to be transmuted into a desire to succeed, to win it all in his spirit, to keep going, to keep pushing, to achieve more. The Bounty Hunter is no-nonsense, practical and efficient in all his dealings. The credits are top priority, and he cares little for anyone outside his family. Even his relationship with his companions maintains a strictly business situation. Speaking of which, I don't think any of the Constellation companions are a great fit for the kind of person the Bounty Hunter is, and instead I stick to hires. Omari, hireable on Aquila, is our ship technician, filling the gaps in our skill set with the shield system skill, and Lyle is our additional muscle, a backup heavy with a shotgun. I gave him an advanced breach modified with explosive rounds, but of course, you the bounty hunter will remain the heavy lifter with your plethora of gadgets and weaponry. The Tracker's Alliance mission board is your friend. Bounties aplenty can be found here, and on top of this, the bounty hunter will seek any money-making opportunities that align with his skill set, that is flying, tracking, and killing. As for factions, the UC Vanguard is a good option. He will see it as a way to get paid and get access to certain connections and resources, helping him get back on his feet. There are also some more practical and cold options to make in the questline choices, which I would recommend. You all know them when you see them. Also, by the end of this quest line, you're going to get a pretty snazzy apartment in New Atlantis. The Freestar Rangers are perhaps a bit too noble in premise for the Bounty Hunter, but at the same time, you can be more of a cutthroat in approach to this quest line if you're looking for more to do. Working for Ryogen is also a possibility, but the skill set isn't a perfect match. And as for Sysdef or Crimson Fleet, working for Sysdef is the way to go. Many of the bounties you get on the Tracker's Alliance board are in fact pirates, so from a gameplay perspective, we want to be able to have them hostile, plus joining pirates isn't really his thing. He's a Bounty Hunter and operates within society, often hunting criminals for government clients. To reduce his character to simplicity on an alignment chart is probably something like a true neutral or neutral evil type character. Again, this is super reductive, but I'm trying to emphasize that he doesn't fit the more chaotic evil vibes of a pirate character. Ultimately, you're on the path to become the greatest bounty hunter in the galaxy with a big dream home and your parents living well and looked after. I really liked having the traits kid stuff and dream home because they give additional motivations for the character to want to get money, even if really at the end of the day, it's just a well-veiled excuse for limitless ambition to be the best. So now after the backstory and role-playing sections, you should have a really good feel for the Bounty Hunter character that we've made for you, and it will surely help you understand the aesthetic vibe of the build. If you're familiar with our classic Fallout 4 and Skyrim builds, then you would know that we often like to prioritize the rule of cool over pure statistical maxing. Same as the skills, we want to give the most on-theme and fun gameplay experience. I think, like the skills section, this gear section is best broken up into early, mid, and late game segments for recommendations. Early game, we won't be able to get our hands on the Bounty Hunter armor, but we should be able to get our hands on some ecliptic armor. The blue and silver together can remind me of Django Fett, but bulkier. Wear whatever helmet you can get your hands on until you should be able to get the Deep Seeker helmet, and this creates more of that visored, covered face feel. The Deep Seeker pack also fits nice and sleek for the Bounty Hunter, but look, you have to prioritize functionality in these early game stages. Later on, you'll be able to modify any pack and armor to your tastes, 
but don't feel obligated to use a power boost pack just because it looks better than the balanced boost pack you have available. In these early stages, you will also be relying on a variety of pistols of varying ammo types. Thanks to our parents, we can get our hands on the unique Old Earth pistol Sir Livingston when they visit Constellation. However, if you head to Rowland Arms in Aquila, you can get your hands on Elegance, which is a really good pistol for the early to mid game. Also, I encourage you to collect and get in the habit of using explosives. Throwing mines and grenades from the sky down upon your enemies will never get old. The impact grenade is my favorite reliable choice for air striking enemies. With apparel, you will select whatever you like. I chose the Space Rogue muscle gear, but I tend to opt to have my armor and helmet on at all times for the menacing faceless bounty hunter aesthetic. Mid game recommendations are slightly trickier. Ecliptic armor still fits the look, but I'd start checking stores that sell spacesuits all the time. And the second you see that bounty hunter armor available, drop the creds and swap out that ecliptic suit. Less Django Fett now, more Boba Fett. Plus, this armor is some of the best in the game stats-wise. There can be variation in when you get certain gear, but the aim for a mid-game stage is to have a modded up mag shot pistol as your primary weapon, and also use a bridger as an additional explosive tool. Perhaps you should also invest in some kind of long distance semi-automatic rifle or hard target as well. Again, you should be filling your inventory with explosives to use all the time. By the later levels, we want to start looking for advanced and superior versions of the bounty hunter armor, same for the Deep Seeker helmet and pack. These will be able to be modified to your desired specifications, but I definitely recommend the following. Ballistic shielding, explosive shielding, heavy shielding, and pocketed. Explosive shielding in there helps us avoid accidental injuries with our explosive playstyle. Pocketed for extra carry weight is great for us as we have a hefty arsenal, and heavy shielding just gives us some extra protection against hazards. Our helmet will be the best version you can find of the Deep Seeker helmet, modded with ballistic shielding, explosive shielding, heavy shielding, and gravitic composites. May as well take any advantage we can get. And the boost pack will be a balanced deep seeker one for the sleeker advanced look with hazard protection and regeneration. This means outside of combat, our health will slowly regenerate so we don't have to burn through as many med packs. The ultimate loadout is the Varun Star Shard particle beam pistol as our main weapon. It is modded with a long barrel, recon laser sight, reflex sight, focus nozzle, annihilator rounds, overclocked, and burst fire, a proper teched up weapon, and thematically those annihilator modifications being described as illegal in most of the settled systems just makes you feel like you have some seriously deadly bounty hunter tier tech. You can just imagine someone hiring you and telling you no annihilator rounds instead of no disintegration. This is our main weapon, and we can keep using a mag shot or its more advanced versions as an additional sidearm to balance ammo usage. But with these, we also have two support weapons. The Mag Sniper for long distance engagements, specced out with a stabilizing barrel, recon laser sight, long scope, muzzle brake, depleted uranium rounds, and high velocity. We'll be using this in the more open areas to quickly take out some few key enemies, perhaps other snipers or turrets so that we can move in easier. Then we can begin the assault by unloading our negotiator, upgraded with a stabilizing barrel, recon laser sight, stabilizing stock, reflex sight, hair trigger, and most importantly, the Hornet Nest. As a boost pack focus character will be able to utilize this to the fullest and use its unique firing scattering rounds to airstrike our enemies and root them out from cover. None will escape the bounty hunter. To really immerse yourself in the role of the bounty hunter with lots of gadgets to handle any situation, do be sure to use all the different weapons situationally and especially all the grenades and mines. Impact grenades, stun mines, tesla pylons, cryo mines, stuff like that. The other essential component of the Bounty Hunter's repertoire is most definitely his ship. We made a full guide on the fastest ship in the galaxy, which was specifically designed for this character. In that video, we also go over a less compact, weapon-heavy version while maintaining a super high speed, but also we show a larger, more elaborate Bounty Hunter-style ship, something like you would see landing in Nar Shaddaa. Personally, my favorite is the most compact and speedy ship possible, equipped with three railguns and a laser. I love being able to navigate asteroid fields super quick and run circles around my prey. It reminds me of the chase scene through the asteroid field in Attack of the Clones. The design of the ship is very much inspired by Mandalorian style aesthetics, 
It's a little bit of a Razor Crest vibe, but adjusted to fit nicely in Starfield. I'd highly recommend that you check out the fastest ship guide, and that will cover extensively all of the options available. But just some extras that weren't in that guide, I recommend for the smaller ship having the all-in-one berth so your small crew has somewhere to sleep. But if you are committed to sleeping in cities or your own home in between trips, then instead you could choose the Armory, which makes sense for a guy with such a vast arsenal, but also in here is a cell, which thematically fits the idea of a bounty hunter if they were to ever capture someone alive but look if you were going to go that kind of route my choice would be the full committal expanded bounty hunter ship with a 2x1 berth and a 2x2 brig it's asymmetrical and looks brilliant but everyone that is everything you need to know to completely immerse yourself in the bounty hunter no one can escape him and he always gets his mark it's now time for you to dive into his story yourself. Thanks so much for watching the video and I hope you enjoyed the third of our many role-playing builds to come. Starfield truly is an incredible game with lots of role-playing character potential and I can't wait to show you what we've come up with. Please give the video a like and subscribe to the channel for more builds to come along with other sensational Starfield content. My name is Scott, thanks so much for watching and I'll be back to nerd out with you again real soon.